Hello, Jeff Zwerink, and welcome again to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important scientific discoveries and how often they provide evidence for the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we're going to explore the optimization of our DNA. Fuzz, it's good to have you here today. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So we often talk, I mean, you know, at least here at RTB, but I know others do it, of talking about DNA as the genetic code. Is it really to, correct to talk about DNA as a computer code? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a good analogy. I think we want to be always careful about maybe pushing the analogy too far. But, you know, DNA is a molecule that harbors information. Uh, sometimes it's called the, the blueprint of life or life's instruction manual. And the reason is, is because embedded in the structure of DNA is the information that the cell's machinery needs to make all of its component parts and to direct its operations. And this information could be thought of as being digital information. The information consists of essentially uh, nucleotide sequences in the DNA molecule. And these, sequen these nucleotides could be thought of as being like the letters uh, in an alphabet that are used to make words. And so uh, because the, the nucleotides that make up DNA are discrete units, we can actually think of that information is being digital information. And that now makes this computer analogy, I think, much more reasonable. Also, interestingly enough, you know, biochemists have discovered that in, embedded within DNA is what's known as an even bit parity code, which is a, a, a technique that is used by computer scientists to detect error in data transmission. We also have discovered that the machinery in the cell that manipulates DNA is literally performing a computer operation, so much so that it has inspired a new area of nanotechnology called DNA computing, where people are building computers from DNA and again, the cells machinery that manipulates DNA. So I think this idea that DNA is like a computer code is not a, a bad analogy at all. It's a very helpful way to think about DNA. So it really does seem like our DNA has the character, or at least some of the characteristics of, a, of computer code. And, I, you know, I spend a lot of time writing computer programs. I, I really love doing it. Uh, you know, and, and there's always, you know, there's multiple aspects I find in writing code. There's the, does it do what I want it to do? There's, does it do what I want it to do in the midst of all sorts of mistakes that can come along? And then especially the bigger the project gets is, does it do what I want it to do as quickly as I can, or, or basically I optimize it so that it works reliably and quickly. Um, do we see that sort of optimization showing up in our genetic code as well? Yeah, and, and we see all types of optimization in DNA. First of all, every aspect of its structural makeup is, it seems to be ideally suited for its role uh, as an information storage system. But then on top of that, we also see an additional type of optimization that to me is really, really very powerful and compelling uh, towards the idea that DNA is in life is the product of a mind. And this is something called the genetic code. And so the way to think of the genetic code is like it's a set of rules that give meaning to the information in DNA. So think about this, if we have a, a, you know, letters in the English alphabet and we just randomly string them together, chances are we're not gonna really produce a word that has any kind of meaning. There's only certain letter combinations that have meaning and that meaning is ultimately determined by the rules of grammar, right? And so you can think of the genetic code as being like the cell's grammatical system that gives meaning uh, to the information in DNA. And it turns out that these rules themselves seem to be exquisitely optimized to prevent any kind of errors taking place during information transmission involving DNA inside the cell. So as you're describing it there, you're talking about the DNA as kind of the data and then there's this genetic code. So is the DNA the software or the hardware? Is it the data that gets read or is it actually in some sense the program that, that runs things, if you will? Well, it's probably both, uh, you know, it, because, you know, in a sense, you know, the, the, it is the data. So, and, but there's also um, embedded in the DNA instructions that then produce the machinery that then manipulate the DNA in such a way to, to make use of that data. So DNA is kind of a bit of both, if you will. So it's a really sophisticated uh, com, you know, computer code in that sense where it's not only 
the instructions, but it's also the data itself that the instructions are reading. So I know you've talked in the past about uh, the genetic code or DNA being optimized for error correction, optimized to carry multiple layers of code. I know you found, you've written an article about a new kind of optimization. I think it's on resource conservation. Describe what that is. Yeah, well, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the genetic code is optimized so that if a mutation happens, which would alter the information in the DNA molecule, that that, that mutational effect has minimal damage to the DNA, causes minimal disruption. But uh, there's another type of optimization that has just been discovered, and this has to do with resource utilization. Uh, you know, the most, some of the most valuable resources that the cell can extract from the environment are nitrogen and carbon atoms. And it uses nitrogen and carbon to build the molecules that essentially make up the cell. And, and not all of these building block materials are equivalent. Some use more nitrogen atoms than others. Some use more carbon atoms than others. And so what happens if a mutation takes place in the DNA can actually uh, alter the, the components of the cell in such a way that they now have to use more nitrogen and carbon from the environment than they otherwise would. And so the genetic code is optimized to, when a, so that when a mutation happens, that, that, the, the, that, the, that the changes actually minimize the excess resource costs that the cell would be confronted with. So it's optimized to ensure uh, you know, the, the optimal use of resources from the environment. You know, that, that's fascinating because as, as I listen to you describe the error minimization that the code is, is built so that if there are changes, even those changes still produce things that have the same function. But in doing that, that's so the fact that it's got uh, that ability to handle errors, the way it does it also allows it to uh, optimize its resources that are available. So the, the, uh, the adaptation to allow error minimization also provides resource utilization. Uh, that to me strikes me of ingenious design. Oh yeah, I mean, when, when I think of the, the best evidence from biochemistry for the work of a creator, it would be the design and the structure of the genetic code. And, you know, and to me, it's, you know, when, whenever we see information, when we see codes, that suggests the work of a mind. That's our common experience is that information and codes come from a mind. But when we see that these systems are so exquisitely optimized, that to me suggests that this mind must be superior, must be beyond, you know, what we can imagine. The ingenuity of the genetic code is mind boggling to say the least. You know, as we look at the genetic code, the DNA that forms the backbone of all life here on earth, we really do find striking evidence that this is actually a code. And the more we investigate it, the more we find evidence of intelligent design. You know, I would really encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Fuzz's latest blog on this topic. It's called The Genetic Code Optimized for Resource Conservation. It will help you understand how the genetic code works and give you great tools for how to use this evidence to go out and share the gospel.